to my video on quadrilaterals. So let's review the best name for these quadrilaterals. And we're going to learn that there's actually more names than just the best name. So the red one is a rectangle, four right angles. The orange one is a trapezoid. And notice trapezoids can have right angles. It has two, this particular one. The purple one here, since they're not all equal, this is a parallelogram. This one, because they are all equal, this darker purple is a rhombus because it has four congruent sides. Now this one also has four congruent sides, but it has four right angles making it a square. And then this one here is specifically called an isosceles trapezoid because this side is congruent to this side. So now let's fill in your notes. So a quadrilateral is any four-sided figure that does not have a more specific name. Quadrilaterals are the broadest category and contain all other four-sided figures. Specific names are given to quadrilaterals that can be classified by their sides, and angles. So now we're going to learn specific names for quadrilaterals and the one that we're not going to cover in the notes is a kite. Okay. Um, but if it's not a kite and it's not any of these specific um, quadrilaterals that we're learning in these notes then we're just going to call it a plain quadrilateral. So when you do classwork and homework and you see a four-sided figure that can't be one of these, then you call it a quadrilateral. So it says, what is a parallelogram? And let me slide this up just a hair. It's a quadrilateral and this is just a reminder, a quadrilateral has four sides. Opposite sides are parallel and congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Now, don't turn the page yet. We're going to uh, draw some markings in here. So I'm going to show you that this side is congruent with this side. So I do the same mark because they're both congruent. But it's not the same length as this. So now I'm going to use a double mark for this side and for this side. And then I'm going to use a little half circle or little mini rainbow on these because these are opposite angles right here and they're congruent. So notice I use the same mark because they're congruent. Now this one is not the same as this one. So now I'm going to use a double mark there like double rainbow. Okay. So this is a parallelogram. Okay. Because not all the sides are equal, so this one doesn't have a specific name other than parallelogram. We'll learn a specific, more specific parallelogram later in the notes. Okay. Now, something also to remember, this is parallel to this, and this is parallel to this. So that means it has two sets of parallel sides. Okay, so a rectangle. Now, does it have two sets of parallel sides? Are these parallel? Yes. Are these parallel? Yes. So, a rectangle is a parallelogram. Okay. Opposite sides are parallel and congruent. And it has four right angles, which measure 90 degrees. Okay, so let's draw in our 90 degree angles. Okay, now we need to show that this side is congruent to this side. 
and this side is congruent to this side. So notice I didn't use the same mark for all the sides because they're not all equal. Okay, now draw the diagonals in like I am about to do here. Draw this and this. So these diagonals are congruent. That's what I was looking for here. And bisect each other. Now one important thing to note here is when they bisect each other, they don't form 90 degree angles. They just bisect each other. So a rhombus. Okay, look. Opposite sides parallel and congruent. Yes, they are, so it's a parallelogram. It has two sets of parallel sides. All sides are congruent. So let's go over to the shape here and make our congruent marks. Now notice I use the same mark for all four sides because they're all equal. Now opposite sides are parallel and congruent. Now let me show you here, okay, that this is parallel to this, so you see arrows here, and also this, and I'm going to use a double arrow here, is parallel to that. Now, because I use a double arrow doesn't mean they're not all still equal, it just means this is parallel to this, and the two arrows here are parallel to these two arrows down here. Okay, so sometimes you'll see these marks. Now, I could also put them on the rectangle and the parallelogram, but I didn't because it already has enough marks here. Okay, so opposite angles are congruent. And down below, diagonals. Oops, let me scroll up here. Diagonals bisect each other. at right angles. And let's add in how many degrees right angles are, 90 degrees. Okay, now let's move on to what is a square. Now I think you probably know most of the markings you'll see in a square. Okay, these are all the same. And these are all right angles. Oops. Hopefully your boxes look more like boxes than mine. And once again, okay, opposite sides are parallel and congruent. So I could draw the arrows here, but we have enough marks here, so we're, we're good. I don't want to put too many marks on one because then it gets awful confusing. But just know if you see arrows, that means they're parallel. Okay, so what is this square? It's a parallelogram. And it's also a rectangle because it has four right angles. Because it has four right angles, it's also considered a rectangle. And this is really going to blow your mind. It's also a rhombus with four right angles. Now, the reason why we call this a rhombus with four right angles is because a rhombus has four congruent sides, but a rhombus does not have four right angles. So we say that this is a rhombus with four right angles. All sides are congruent. And opposite sides are parallel. Has four right angles, which measure 90 degrees. Diagonals are, now let's draw in the diagonals so we can see here. So draw in these diagonals. And we are going to draw this in the center. 
Okay, that's showing four right angles in the center, and we say that the diagonals are perpendicular when two lines form 90 degree angles. Perpendicular. They are the same length, and they also bisect each other. Now, do me a favor. Okay, we need to go back to rhombus for a second. And I forgot to put the bisecting lines in the rhombus. So let's go ahead and add the bisecting lines because I need to show you something. So here's draw your bisecting lines. And the rhombus also has 90 degree angles in the center here when they bisect. So rhombus and square are the only two that bisect and form 90 degree angles in the center. The rectangle does not form 90 degrees, but it does have bisecting lines. Okay, now let's move on to the third page. Okay, what is a trapezoid? It's a quadrilateral. Has exactly one pair of parallel sides. Not always, but could have one pair of opposite sides. Congruent. And a trapezoid with congruent non-parallel sides is called isosceles. So underline isosceles there. Now if isosceles has non-parallel congruent sides, which of these has non-parallel congruent sides? Right here. Non-parallel because they would intersect up here somewhere. But they're congruent. So we call this isosceles. Trapezoid. Now this one has two right angles. So we could call this just a trapezoid, but sometimes you might hear it called right angle trapezoid. Okay, now also right here, this is parallel to this, okay? And this is parallel to this, okay? All right, now let's complete the chart. So we have a parallelogram. Does a parallelogram have one or two pairs of parallel sides? Good, it has two pairs. Are all the sides congruent? No. Are opposite sides congruent? Mean, are these congruent? Are these congruent? Yes, they are. Right angles, you can clearly see no. Are opposite angles congruent? Meaning, are these equal and are these equal? Yes, they are. Okay, rectangle. One or two pairs of parallel sides. Good, it has two pairs because a rectangle is a parallelogram. Are all sides congruent? Nope. Are opposite sides congruent? Yes, this side congruent, these two sides congruent. All right angles, yes. And opposite angles congruent, yes. So a rectangle is a parallelogram, it's also a quadrilateral as well. Okay, a square, one or two pairs? We have two pairs, okay? Now I know it doesn't exactly look like a square, it's supposed to, so let me add these markings in so we can that will tell us it's definitely a square, even though it doesn't quite look like it. So all sides are congruent. Are opposite sides congruent? Yeah, if they're all equal, then opposite sides are. Does that have four right angles? A square always does. And opposite angles are congruent? Yes, they do. So a square is a rectangle. It's a parallelogram. It's a quadrilateral. And it's also, we also talked earlier, it's a rhombus. Okay, now let's look at the rhombus. Let's draw these markings in. Okay, one or two pairs, it's two pairs, so a rhombus is a parallelogram, but it's not a square or a rectangle because it doesn't have right angles, but all sides are congruent, so check that. Opposite sides are congruent because they're all equal, but a rhombus does not have right angles, so don't check this box, and opposite angles are congruent, yes, they are, because these are congruent and these are congruent. Okay, and the trapezoid. One or two pairs? Good, one pair. 
And guess what? It doesn't have anything else. Opposite sides are not congruent. Opposite angles, it doesn't have four congruent sides. Okay, trapezoid is just, he only has one friend, the quadrilateral, that's it. Okay, now last page. Let's complete this chart, and I'm going to have to do this kind of uh, sideways. You'll be able to turn your paper sideways, but uh, this is going to be complicated for me to do. So, the top were called all quadrilaterals, so you can write it the normal way. I'm going to have to write kind of sideways, but you can turn your paper so you can write normal. Okay, now, the one off by itself right here is a trapezoid. Again, you're writing normal, I'm writing backwards, whatever you want to call it. Okay, now let's shift to the other part here. And this one in the center, okay, is parallelogram, because remember there are three parallelograms. That's why there are, these are all pointing to parallelogram. And this one's even pointing to parallelogram through these shapes. Now, remember which one should go in the middle. Good, square, because a square is all of these. A square is a rhombus, so it's a rectangle, and it's a parallelogram, so square's in the middle. Now, it doesn't matter which one you put on which side. Okay, I'm going to put the rhombus here and the rectangle on the other side. Now, those are the only two that are interchangeable. The other ones have to go in the exact same spot. Square always has to go here, parallelogram here, quadrilateral on top, and trapezoid. You can't see it on my screen, but it's over here somewhere. Okay, that concludes our notes on quadrilaterals. I hope you have a great day.